Could invisible aliens really exist among us here on Earth? An astrobiologist explains, this is on The Conversation, by Samantha Rolf, lecturer in astrobiology, principal technical officer at Bay Ford Bury Observatory, University of Hertfordshire in the UK. Life is pretty easy to recognize. It moves, it grows, it eats, it excretes, it reproduces. Simple. In biology, researchers often use the acronym MRSGREN to describe it. It stands for movement, respiration, sensitivity, growth, reproduction, excretion, and nutrition. But Helen Sharman, Britain's first astronaut and a chemist at Imperial College London, recently said that alien life forms that are impossible to spot may be living among us. So how could that be possible? While life may be easy to recognize, it's actually notoriously difficult to define and has had scientists and philosophers in debate for centuries, if not millennia. For example, a 3D printer can reproduce itself, but we wouldn't call it alive. On the other hand, a mule is famously sterile, but we would never say it does not live. As anybody can agree, there are more than a hundred definitions of what life is. An alternative but imperfect approach is describing life as a self-sustaining chemical system capable of Darwinian evolution, which works for many cases we want to describe. The lack of definition is a huge problem when it comes to searching for life in space. Not being able to define life, or rather, we'll know it when we see it, means that we are truly limiting ourselves to geocentric, possibly even anthropocentric, ideas of what life looks like. When we think about aliens, we often picture a humanoid creature, but the intelligent life we are searching for does not have to be humanoid. Life, but not as we know it. Sharman says she believes aliens exist, and there's no two ways about this. Furthermore, she wonders, will they be like you and me, made up of carbon and oxygen and nitrogen? Maybe not. It's possible they're right here now, and we simply can't see them. Such life would exist in a shadow biosphere. By that, I don't mean a ghost realm, but undiscovered creatures, probably with a different biochemistry. This means we can't study or even notice them because they are outside of our comprehension. Assuming it exists, such a shadow biosphere would probably be microscopic. So why haven't we found it? We have limited ways of studying the microscopic world as only a small percentage of microbes can be cultured in the lab. This may mean that there could indeed be many life forms we haven't yet spotted. We do now have the ability to sequence the DNA of uncultured strains of microbes, but this can only detect life as we know it that contains DNA. If we find such a biosphere, however, it's unclear whether we should call it alien. That depends on whether we mean of extraterrestrial origin or simply unfamiliar. Silicon-based life? A popular suggestion for an alternative biochemistry is one based on silicon rather than carbon. It makes sense even from a geocentric point of view. Around 90% of the Earth is made up of silicon, iron, magnesium and oxygen which means there's lots, of, uh, lots to go around for building potential life. Silicon is similar to carbon. It has four electrons available for creating bonds with other atoms, but silicon is heavier with 14 protons. Protons make up the atomic nucleus with neutrons, compared to the six in the carbon nucleus. While carbon can create strong double and triple bonds to form long chains useful for many functions, such a building as building cell walls, it's much harder for silicon. It struggles to create strong bonds, so long chain molecules are much less stable. And what's more, common silicon compounds such as silicon dioxide or silica are generally solid at terrestrial temperatures and they're not soluble in water. Compare this to highly soluble carbon dioxide, for example, and we see that carbon is more flexible and provides many more molecular possibilities. Life on Earth is fundamentally different from the bulk composition of the Earth. Another argument against a silicon-based shadow biosphere is that too much silicon is locked up in rocks. In fact, the chemical composition of life on Earth has an approximate correlation with the chemical composition of the Sun, with 98% of atoms in biology consisting of hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. 
So if there were viable silicon life forms there, they may have evolved elsewhere. That said, there are arguments in favor of silicon-based life on Earth. Nature is adaptable. A few years ago, scientists at Caltech managed to breed a bacterial protein that creates bonds with silicon, essentially bringing silicon to life. So even though silicon is inflexible compared with carbon, it could perhaps find ways to assemble into living organisms, potentially including carbon. And when it comes to other places in space, such as Saturn's moon Titan, or planets orbiting other stars, we certainly can rule out the possibility of silicon-based life. To find it, we have to somehow think outside the terrestrial biology box and figure out ways of re uh, recognizing life forms that are fundamentally different from the carbon-based form. There are plenty of experiments testing out these alternative biochemistries, such as one from Caltech. Regardless of the belief held by many that life exists elsewhere in the universe, we have no evidence for that. So it's important to consider all life as precious, no matter its size, quantity, or location. The Earth supports the only known life in the universe. So no matter what form life elsewhere in the solar system or universe may take, we have to make sure we protect it from harmful contamination, whether it is terrestrial life or alien life forms. So could aliens be among us? I don't believe that we have been visited by a life form with the technology to travel across the vast distances of space, but we do have evidence of, uh, for life-forming carbon-based molecules having arrived on our Earth on meteorites. So the evidence certainly does not rule out the same possibility for more unfamiliar life forms. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.